Okay. Well, that didn't go as planned. Where's my camera? Uh, okay. Let me see. Doom, 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 doom. Okay, where where's my camera? GoPro. Oh, no, that's not GoPro. Uh, that's really weird. Um, horizontal description. Okay, there's there's me. Um, <laughs> great. Where's my freaking camera? <clears throat> oh, turn that down a little bit. Uh, let me see. H60 properties. Grady, great, 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 great. Oh, there I am. Okay. No. Hey, Walt. How you doing? Good. Good to see you. There I am. Hello. Um. <laughs> uh. Happy Friday. Uh. Walt, we missed you on Wednesday at uh, CSEC East. Uh. Went to a place called Dosa House, which, um, if I could be honest. I don't do vegetarian, but if I decided to go vegetarian, I would probably eat there a lot. So that was that was kind of interesting. A lot of excellent food, which I still have some in the refrigerator. As a matter of fact, I probably need to finish those. Um, I'm glad I'm glad Ted and and Mike and a bunch of other folks, Eugenia and everybody, was able to come out. Uh, sorry I missed you, Walt, but uh, you know, as long as you continue coming on the stream, uh, you won't miss me. So uh, there you go. Uh, <clears throat> all right, so let's see, uh, end of the week, anybody have any wins, anything we want to talk about, anything that, uh, you're excited happened or you know, get a new job or, you know, learning, learning some things. So, um, would love to, I'm sorry, hold on, wait a sec, I don't know what this messenger is, but, uh, oh, <clears throat> yeah, okay, I got that already. Weird. No, blue mirror. Oh, I haven't taken out option two there. Um, <clears throat> oh, that hurts. Wow. Okay. Oh, interesting. So we had somebody exit our Discord community. Um, sorry, the. Uh... Hold on, just typing something up. <clears throat> Fit for would love to know if you uh, had input. Uh, uh, ways to improve. <clears throat> I saw something online. Uh, what restaurant? It was called Dosa House. Uh, let me let me get rid of myself on Twitch here, uh, and we will. Uh, yeah. Just indulge me uh, if you don't live in the Seattle area. My apologies. Uh, it's a it was a really good um, uh, South Indian joint, I believe, is what the place was. Uh, South Indian, uh, yeah, and some some fusion stuff. So it was it's pure Indian uh, vegetarian food, which I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. Um, no, not Grubhub. Come on, man. Website. There we go. And a whole, you know, you could order on the phone and whatever. And um, the portions are huge. I actually, <laughs> if, if Digital Warhead comes on, uh, he may or may not have sh taken a picture of me with two. Wait a minute. I got that. Let me, let me, let me go find that for a second. Um, let me see. Where is it? Uh, Digital Warhead. Uh, okay. So um, he has it somewhere. He'll, he'll post it up. But, um, I had no idea what the food was, so it was good that they had descriptors uh, on the app on in the restaurant. Uh, I ended up getting uh, a dosa, one of the dosas, uh, the Mysore masala. That's a, that one there, um, and then you know they're huge. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not you know telling you how big. <clears throat> oh hey, you're live from Recon. Uh, no one Zayop, uh, Zayoyup. Uh, no, I don't go to Recon. Uh, I heard, I, I think we have some folks that are going to be there. Um, uh, not sure how you thought I was at Recon, but okay. Um, yeah, we're, I, I, 
I don't have the um I don't want to say uh I don't want to travel right now, so I'm good. Um got to got to travel in a couple of weeks to San Diego, so I'm really looking forward to not traveling for a while. So after that, so I'm not going to be doing any conferences outside of maybe Cactus Con in October. So um, maybe I'll get to Recon eventually. Some of my team members are actually at Recon, so that's uh, I'm sure we'll hear some cool stuff coming out of that. And so, yeah. <clears throat> uh, no, no, I know, but so Recon.cx is the, I think this is the event you're talking about here, June 9 through 11. So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I have, co I have colleagues who are there, and then the training was from 5 to 8. Uh, June uh, in Montreal. Montreal is a lovely town. Been there. Um, but yeah, um, just have some coworkers who are there. So it uh, looks like you can follow them on various sites here. So <clears throat> no, it's all good. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we're, um, you know, uh, learning, learning a little bit of Zig. Um, you know, this is, uh, so I, I, I tried to, I, I didn't try, I was learning Golang, but I ran into a wall where it's like uh, some of the tutorials I was learning uh, wasn't backwards compatible. So um, unless somebody has a better option, like, you know, make me set up Rust or some god-awful system like that, um, you know, uh, somebody had mentioned that this is good, so we're going to give this a shot. Um, <clears throat> if anything, this is going to be like a, what do they call that? Uh, the, the consumer reports thing. It's like, ah, why should you use Zig? Well, it's like, okay, it should be easy to install, right? Okay, well, let's go see if it's easy to install and let's see if it's easy to, you know, use and learn and all that. So, um, <clears throat> all right, so this is the site, uh, ziglang.org. And we're going to go ahead and do that. So this is a live uh, demo, <laughs> such as it is. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna poke around here. Let me get my VS Code up. Now I have done a, I had did I had done I did done I did I did try setting things up uh, as you know before. We're gonna use VS Code for this for our IDE uh, for our Cody bits. Uh, so I'm gonna move some windows around here and shrink some windows up uh, because you know that's that's how we do here. Um, <clears throat> So the, the first thing you do is you go to ziglang.org. Uh, you can go ziglang.org and you go to get started. And so it tells you, you know, how to start. Do you want to do a tag release or nightly build? Obviously, if you do a nightly build, you run into some issues. Maybe you don't want to use that. Uh, you know, it's going to be <clears throat> if you're they, they do say that this is like still kind of in beta. So you don't want to necessarily run it for production purposes. Um, but they do, you know, tie the, the release cycles to versions of LLVM, which is a uh, compiler. So LLVM, for those of you unaware. Wow. Oh, Google. Azure Portal was down earlier today. So, um, wow, that is that is the slowest I've ever seen Google in, in a long time. Uh, close that and try that again. So. <clears throat> no. Okay, am, am I, okay, God, all right. <clears throat> it's compiler infrastructure, there you go, llvm.org. Uh, I don't think I had to install LLVM, but we'll see. Um, so we're gonna go back to here. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go smart. I'm gonna go bog stable, tag release, no nightly build, because the nightly build is gonna invite bad stuff and in ignorant stuff. So let me shrink the icon. There you go. Um, <clears throat> uh, all right. I'm going to move my picture up here to the top. There you go. Let's look around here a little bit. All right. So, <clears throat> straightforward way of obtaining Zig. Uh, grab your Zig bundle from your platform from the downloads page. So we will uh, go to the downloads page. Um, so this is, I think, the latest version. You want to go with something a bit more 
you know, robust and spicy. You could pick something that was released uh, within the last 24 hours. Probably not a good idea uh, if you want to learn something. So I'm going to go ahead and download 64-bit architecture. <clears throat> it comes in a zip file. So um, I just double-clicked on the downloaded file, which you cannot see. Uh, <clears throat> so... Window Capture, Explorer, there we go. <clears throat> okay, Let's shrink this down a little bit. There we go. So uh, you're going to capture these files, copy, and for ease of purposes to put inside of my path, I created earlier a file directory called zig <clears throat> and this is this is one from like uh, june 7th but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to overwrite it with the existing version that's there the 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 night uh the you know the one ten dot one release instead of the uh the, the master branch here so <clears throat> so it's it's doing its thing it's at three percent right now so um you can't see it. Um, I'll let you know when it happens. How's everybody doing? While we're sitting here waiting, you know, feel free to download and follow along if you like. Um, let me let me go and check out some of the documentation here. All right. So the next thing we have to do, I guess we can do this while it's you know doing its thing. I will remove the Explorer's uh, desktop bit. <clears throat> Yeah, we'll hold off on that. So we have to add them to our PowerShell system-wide admin thing. Um, <clears throat> I will say I tried to do this. It didn't work for me. So I did it the old school, um, um, uh, not Microsoft way, but I did it the old school Windows way where uh, you go into start, you go into, you type uh, search for environmental variables. So in Windows 10, it's, you know, system properties. And... <clears throat> go to environmental variables. Let me get a screenshot here that we can show everybody. <clears throat> okay. Uh, window capture images. Huh. Wonder why it won't show photos. Oh, it didn't like that at all, does it? Photos, environment variables. There we go. So <clears throat> environmental variables, this is not the screenshot. This is the actual uh, environment. So I went into path and you can go edit and you can see I put call it C colon sig. Seriously, God damn. Okay, there's a lot of issues with, <sighs> with this. So yeah, you go in and you click edit right here on your, um, on your path, and then the environmental variables come up. Uh, you click, you know, edit, and then you can put in C colon sig uh, on your on your your system there. So, in this case, I put you know C colon backslash sig. <clears throat> yep, that's how I did it. Finally, eventually. Um, and you know you go in and you click uh, OK after you've done that. So you you know just hit Enter and it'll add that to the list. You hit OK. Um, I when I in in VS Code I had to restart VS Code so it would take advantage of the path variables. So that's something to think about if you're if you're going in and doing that. Uh, let me make sure are we done yet? No, it's decided now. It's going to be super freaking slow. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> Thing I didn't expect. Yeah, you can also add it in Linux if you've got Linux or OS or BSD. You can export path, which would be the easiest way to do it if you you know use Linux. Um, you can also install via Chocolatey. Um, I used Chocolatey back in the day when it was like super immature. It was like you know just something that you ran from command line uh, and um, 
it's okay. I mean, I didn't, I didn't install it. It probably adds all the path and everything for you. So if you want a package manager for Windows, Chocolatey is an option. Uh, Brew, Homebrew also works. Uh, Pip, I think Mac ports, yeah. So they've updated theirs. It used to be um, Mac ports, and now they have you know Brew, Homebrew. Uh, Linux is available in package managers. All your favorite package managers will be able to have it. <clears throat> so they're available in Alpine, Arch. If you you know hate yourself and you like Gen 2, I'm sure it's in Gen 2 as well. Oh, there it is right there. Uh, if you you know you love pain, uh, Gen 2 or Arch is available. Alpine, of course. Um, yeah, tons of pack. OpenBSD. Wow. Okay. Well, wow. old ass version of OpenBSD. <clears throat> OpenSUSE. Wow. Okay. Half of these ones I don't even know. So Termux, okay. Winget, Winget. Winget's another package manager for Windows. Um, you can actually use it if you want to uh, get around the, the issues there. Okay, close that. I'm going to close that because that's just confusing the hell out of me. Uh, uh, all right, so we downloaded that. Uh, okay, so we can run Hello World. So, um, to be honest, I tried this part and it didn't work for me, which is one reason I was like, hey, maybe I'll start over again. And what you can't see is this thing running at zero bytes. I've got 14,000 files to unzip. So I will tell you that Zig is not lighter than Golang because I was able to install Golang pretty damn quickly. So um, I don't know if it's the IO coming off of my computer or whatever it is, but uh, I didn't expect it to take According to this, an hour and five minutes. So it's either going to be what Windows says it's going to be, or uh, it's going to you know, really take an hour and five freaking minutes uh, to go through with this. So, <clears throat> okay. Um, technically, I should still be able to do stuff with it, but um, so you can. So I've gone in here. You go. Uh, Go into the necessary directory, uh, zig, and then it asks you to uh, create a directory called mkdir hello world. There you go. Okay, why is it giving me autocomplete? If I can't autocomplete, I should be able to hit tab and make that happen, but no, that didn't work. So, all right, there's hello world. So I'll go CD hello world. And then it tells you you can go zig init dash attack exe, which uh, very similar to how Golang worked, where it was like you're setting up the environment, your dependencies, um, you know, it'll keep track of what you're downloading and installing. So zig init dash exe. So it created a build.zig, source main.zig. It says next try zig help or zig run. Um, this is where I ran into issues, uh, even with the nightly version. And it may fail because I'm actively copying files over, but my understanding is that it's backward compatible. So the file should just work. Yeah, see, the same thing happened the last time. It said file not found. So. Um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but build run doesn't work. So <sighs> let's go and ask the question on the Googs. Uh, all right, so uh, Zig, hello world, error, file not. <clears throat> file not found when compiling. Yeah, yeah. Small release builds fail with file not found error. Uh, confusing file not found error when linking lib and libc. This thing may be hot garbage, and we may want to go and try to do Rust. So um, the fact that there's 2,200 issues is uh, not good either. So wow, it looks like they've got all kinds of issues with just installing this shit. So... <clears throat> Executive decision. All right. Okay. 
Executive decision. If Beta Wolf is on, you better get on, Beta Wolf. You better get on. Uh, Rust programming language. All right. <clears throat> this was the fallback plan was to go to Rust, especially if, you know, because Rust is getting popular with Windows right now. As we mentioned, it's uh, um, kind of a big deal with try Rust without installing. Okay. Let's just let's just play inside the Rust uh, in environment for a while. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kill the forever installation. Now we're up to one hour and thirty five minutes. All right. Okay. I'm I'm done with Ziglang. So apologies if you came here for Ziglang. Um, let me go ahead and change some shit. Ziglang sucks. <clears throat> Good. Moving to Rust. There we go. See? There we go. And we'll put, uh, get rid of Golang Beginner and put Rust Lang Beginner. There we go. Why is the window done? All right. Um, all right, so we'll close that. If I ever get Ziglang to work, um, eventually maybe we'll go back to it. But um, yeah, it doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense to try to use something that doesn't work, even when I tried uh, online. So, all right, install Rust. Uh, while we're sitting here, I will go ahead and grab Rust up in it dot exe. <clears throat> Say yes. And proceed with installation. All right, so what happened was uh, rust-init.exe downloaded quickly, uh, opened up a cmd.exe and said, welcome to Rust, uh, Visual C++ prerequisites. You have to have the C++ build tools for Visual Studio 2013 or later. They don't seem to be installed. You can acquire the build tools by installing Microsoft Visual Studio. Check the box for development environment with C++, which will ensure the needed components are installed. If your locale language is not English, then additionally check the box for language English under language pack. So do you want to continue? Yes. Uh, welcome to Rust. You know, there's a bunch of stuff it's going to add. This will download and install official compiler for the Rust programming language and its package manager cargo. You know, just got to be different, don't you? All right, so we're installing things. We're moving things around. Delete that one and delete Explorer. Yes, and then we will open up Winder Capture CMD. There we go. So now it's doing the installation. As you can see, it did get all the bits here. So you see it's downloading rustinit.exe and then it's going through downloading all the necessary bits. Uh, Rust 1.7.0. Rust is installed now great. You started, you need to restart your current shell. This will reload path environment variables to include cargo bin directory. Press enter to continue. There we go. Okay. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn off VS Code and reactivate VS Code. <clears throat> I'm a little gun shy because I can't ex exactly believe that that was 100% correct. Uh, no. Uh, Discard. All right, so uh, we are at, okay, so 1.8 is the latest version. Close that. Uh, close that. And save. Oh, by the way, today's episode of the Breaking Security Podcast stream is brought to you by Blue Mirror. Uh, Blue Mirror, which provides easy to use SIM and XDR that can be set up in minutes. Teams of all sizes can resolve security threats faster with detection rules written by our own Amanda Berlin. You can learn more at bluemirror.com slash break. Um, 
I did actually do the right thing this time, and we have verified our interview to, uh, on Sunday. Uh, just keep an eye out for that. Um, I'll record it for the podcast as well. And I do want to thank uh, Dust on Keyboard for following us five days ago. That was a little bit of housekeeping I didn't do uh, a little while ago. So, All right, so we're going to go and where's our extensions here? All right, Rust. I'm going to grab Rust. We're going to find whatever legitimate version of software Rust is. Rust language support for Visual Studio Code pre-release. No, you know what? I'm going to use this because it has a blue check mark. Is what it is. Uh, <clears throat> and they have an extension pack for Rust. I don't know what the extension pack does. Oh, it looks like it adds Toml and crates and a bunch of other stuff. So let's not use that one. Any code Rust? What does that mean? No contributions. Okay, I don't know what that one is. Rust mod generator, Rust flash snippets. Ew. I hope that I hope Flash is not like Adobe Flash. <clears throat> Rust code syntax, Rust Playground, convenient way to play around with Rust. Rust Playground is great for playing around with small with a small idea in Rust, but it's unfortunate it has to run in the browser on someone else's machine. How about instead of using it in the browser, you could use it in your regular editor? Okay, sounds fun. Rust extension pack. All right, so I'm gonna. It says install pre-release, so of course the original one looks deprecated, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on. <clears throat> this is use Rust Analyzer extension instead. Okay, so that's the one it wants us to use, so we will use that one. <clears throat> Switch to release version. Yeah, let's let's do that instead. I don't know why it's not available in here, but yeah, cool. Okay. Uh reload required. So we click on that. And we're back. All right. <clears throat> okay, it says, uh, um, oh, uh, sure, let's install Zig as well. Shit, why not? Nightly, you know, whatever. <clears throat> Decompressing. Okay, so let's go here. I'm going gonna, gonna to leave that alone. I'm going to create... To add a new folder to the workspace. We're going to call it Rust. I'm going to get fancy here. Uh, okay. Click right, click new, go Rust. <clears throat> okay. We add the, yes, I trust implicitly the author of that environment, such as it is. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> so it's been installed. <laughs> wow, I lost viewers because we didn't go to Ziglang. Interesting. All right. Well, that's okay. Because if Rust works out, then I'll be a kernel mod. I'll be a kernel developer inside of a week. So there you go. Um, <clears throat> all right. So we've installed Rust up. We're getting started with the rest and like a more detailed walkthrough, getting our getting our setup page. Okay, cargo is the Rust build tool and package manager. <clears throat> when you install Rust up, you'll also get the latest stable version of the Rust build tool and package manager, also known as cargo. You can build your project with cargo build, test your project with cargo run. Test or run your project with Cargo Run, test your project with Cargo Test, build documentation for your project in Cargo Doc. I'm sensing a theme here. <clears throat> Publish a library to crates.io with Cargo Publish. To test that you have Cargo and Rust installed, you can run this in your terminal of choice. Okay. At some point, I'm going to figure out what to do with my light. <clears throat> because right now it's just hanging off of the lens on my big ass camera. So at some point I'm going to have to figure out where I'm going to put this in the new place so that uh, I like to look kind of demonic right now. But oh, there we go. That's not so bad. Could be worse. Could be worse. Kind of 
<laughs> Bad programmer, I guess. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna go to Zig. We're gonna go to, uh, to Rust. I'm sorry, Rust. Uh, read the cargo book. Apparently, there's a cargo book. Of course, there is. Uh, so here's the cargo book. If you want to check that out. <laughs> all right, so we have the Rust Cargo Manager. Um, all right, so it said in your terminal of choice, new terminal uh, in Rust. <clears throat> okay, um, and what did it say? Do do cargo 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 dash version. All right, so we do cargo dash dash version. <clears throat> Ding. All right, <clears throat> Rust support is in many editors. VS Code, Sublime Text, Atom, Intel J Family, Eclipse, Vim, Emacs, Genie, G-E-A-N-Y, Genie, maybe. Don't know how to spell it, or don't know how to pronounce it, but it sounds right. I've seen this, I've just, I've used Emacs, I've used Vim, I've used Atom, I've used Sublime Text, I've, I use VS Code. Never used IntelliJ family. IntelliJ? I don't know what an, Oh, the JetBrains thing. I never quite understood that, but okay. <clears throat> I'm sure it's good. Whatever will render text, and, you know, if you're using Windows or using Linux, you're going to you have a separate terminal for that, or you can use something that's embedded into your favorite IDE to run code with. It doesn't matter where you put it. It doesn't have to be a fancy-ass uh, UI. You can just run VM from a terminal window and do all of your stuff. <clears throat> or Nano. Nano will even work. It's not an IDE. It's a text editor, right? So um, <clears throat> obviously the more complex the IDE, you're going to have things like syntax checking and um, uh, linters or th something like that's going to go, hey, you know, you can't write for shit. So. All right, so let's write a small application with our new Rust development environment. To start, we'll use Cargo to make a new project for us. In your terminal of choice, run hello new, Cargo new, hello Rust. Okay, so we're in Rust. <clears throat> okay, so what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a directory called hello Rust. So unlike Golang and the aforementioned Ziglang, you had to create the directory yourself and then it would do it. So in this one, I just go to Rust, and then I say, hello, Rust. <clears throat> and there it is. So we have cargo toml, T-O-M-L, source. And then under that, we have main source, and then we have something called git ignore, which is probably the GitHub stuff because um, I put all these directories in my GitHub sync, which is actually on my Google Drive. So, <clears throat> so it says, cargo.toml is the manifest file for Rust. It's where you keep metadata for your projects as well as dependencies. So it's creating your SBOM for you. What, what libraries you're dependent upon. Uh, source main.rs is where we'll write our application code. So main.rs is like your funk main for all intents and purposes. <clears throat> Cargo new generates a hello world project for us. We can run this program by moving into the new directory we made and running this in our terminal. So we go. CD, uh, hello, hello, Rust. And then we go, <clears throat> make sure everything can be seen. What the hell is going on? Oh, that's because I haven't put anything in there yet. Okay, just to make sure everybody can see everything that's going on. Um, <clears throat> cargo run. So I just put cargo run. Okay, so that worked. It says, oh, God damn. <sighs> yes, I thank you. That VS Code is a different product. Uh, I get it. Okay, it's fine. <clears throat> okay, what was the point of running the installation? Bit if it didn't do all of that for us. If that's what it was supposed to do. What was the freaking point of running the script? 
<clears throat> I'm glad I'm not a developer because I'd be really pissed if I was a developer and this shit was this difficult. Okay, so the error message said. The error message said. <clears throat> Build to or build tools for Visual Studio were installed with the Visual C++ option. Okay, so I I don't know if Visual Studio 2017 is uh, free or not. So um, I'll have to go see. <clears throat> okay, Visual Studio download. Download Visual Studio. Community? Maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough. Okay, so I did download a 3.6 meg EXE called Visual Studio Setup from this site, which looks pretty. <clears throat> hey, hey, Walt, IntelliJ. Okay, well, that that's good because I didn't, I never used it before. So if it's just another IDE, then that's fine. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't mean to use the just uh, in a derogatory manner there, but you can put code in it or you can write shit in it. So that's what it is. <clears throat> All right, so it says Visual Studio Installer. Before we get started, we need to set up a few things so you can... What's going to kill me is if this thing wants to restart when I'm done. Before you get started, it's gonna, more about privacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody reads the terms and conditions, whatever. All right, so it's saying, it's verifying, it's downloading the Visual Studio installer. <clears throat> and it's downloading, it's installed, it's doing the circly thing. Yes. Okay, so, oh, I remember this. Oh, I hate this. Okay. <clears throat> I I remember having to deal with this the last time. Uh well hello. Oh my goodness. Lady P. Hey, what's going on? Hello. Lady P, thank you for being subscriber of Prime Gaming. Um join me, Lady P, as I take a swift kick to the sack every second that I'm having to install Rust. So, <clears throat> Visual Studio. Let's see if I can. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> well, that's one of the errors that comes up. Do you want to continue without workloads? No, I want to add workloads. I'm assuming. So I'll go back to Visual Studio Installer. There we go. <laughs> Why do you delight in my pain, Lady P? That hurts me. That hurts me. Um, <clears throat> so, um. Remove out of support components. Okay, there's nothing to remove. Uh, according to, let's see, what do I need to install in here for VS Code? <clears throat> I look forward to everybody's feedback when they watch this and they're like, you shouldn't be so down on people's, th you know, programming languages. I'm like, well, if it wasn't so fucking difficult to install, you know, it should just work. Um, <clears throat> so uh, where's the installation instruction? Here we go. All right. More about Rust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, learn more. <clears throat> Which installer should you use? Rust runs on many platforms. There are many ways to install Rust. The most straightforward recommended way is the main install page. Okay, I did all that. <clears throat> Tool chain management. Figuring your path variable. And uh, Okay, so I actually... This is this is incomplete documentation. I will tell you right effing now. <clears throat> you can't just install Rust in it.exe and call it good. You just you just can't. Um, <clears throat> so all right, let, let's see what happens if I do Rust up. Rust up is the tool chain installer. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. 
installs the Rust program language, enabling you to easily switch between stable, beta, and nightly. Okay, great. Consider running Rust uh, doc dash book to learn Rust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> set the default tool chain, check for updates. Show the active and installed tool chains or profiles. Uh, run a command with an environment configured for a given tool chain. All right. Sorry, you didn't see all of that that I was just looking at on there. Uh, individual components, maybe? Mm. <clears throat> all right. So let me... Where is that uh, file that I downloaded? Okay, so Rust init startup. All right, so I'm going back to that. It says this requires C++ build tools for Visual Studio 2013 or later, but they don't seem to be installed. You can acquire the build tools by installing Microsoft Visual Studio, which I've kind of installed. So here's the Studio Community version. It didn't say I needed uh, the exact version, I don't think. Um, so it says I need the Microsoft C++ build tools, but I don't know what that is here. Is it this? Sure, maybe. I mean, it's not specific. It says check the box for desktop. Oh, desktop development. Okay, here we go. All right. See, that's what you get, kids, when you don't read. Um, <clears throat> listen to your old Uncle Brian. Yeah, it says check the box for desktop development with C++, which will ensure the needed components are installed. If your locale is not English, check box under English or English. So, okay. So, we, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Universal platform development. Interesting. Create applications for universal Windows platform with C Sharp, Visual Basic, or optionally C++. So this is the, the other option if you don't want to go that route. It gives you the... Oh, I didn't want... Come on, man. There we go. So it's going to install a bunch of stuff for us over here. JavaScript. Uh, it could give us all these other dish, additional options. Windows App SDK, all that, but it's going to hook us up with all these bits here. So, oh, it's only nine gig. So, hey, you know, <clears throat> install while downloading. Yes, yeah, so let's let's do that because it seems like I'm gonna need to sit here forever. Forever. Sounds a little faster than I thought it would be. Okay, it's not too bad. The installation is the gatekeeper if you can't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lady P, I get it. Um, so what you're saying is if you can't install software, you're too dumb to program. That's what I'm understanding. <clears throat> no, I, you know, you would think it would be, one, you would think that, hey, Rust would be like, hey, all, all, all are welcome. Uh, we're making it so easy. A caveman can do it. Uh, and you, I know. I know that. I know that. It's okay, Lady P. Um, <clears throat> You, you would think that developers would make shit easy to do, and obviously I'm not a developer, so, you know, it's not for the layman. Uh, of course, I, you know, I, I could have read better, so there are mistakes were made. Uh, the fact that it's downloading at 30 meg a second is quite impressive, so um, it's kicking ass. After you install Visual Studio, there's a command prompt that will set up your environmental variables required to use the build tools from the command. Uh, okay, sounds good. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm at package. Uh, this is almost like downloading Kali, uh, Kali Linux updates and stuff. I mean, you know, every time you run that uh, in in the past that I've had, it's like you know, download another 600 packages or something. So. <clears throat> Hey, Lady P, um, how was your week? How'd you do? You doing all right? Everything okay? I'm at, I think I just had my one-on-one -on -one with my boss today, and I told him we're down to two weeks. So I've got 10 days, 10 working days. 
14 days left here in the Seattle area, which is like four or five more streams. And then we'll be like, goodbye, so long, farewell, Avina Zane, you know, and then that stream, you know, probably the Tuesday after will be like 20, I think I'm going to take, I'm going to take the 23rd and the 24th off or the 22nd and the 23rd off. There won't be any on the 23rd because we will be uh, literally getting the hell out of the house on the 23rd and staying the night in a hotel down near Se Seattle Airport. So we've got the one on the 12th, the 14th, 16th, and the 20th. And then we won't, I won't be on again until probably the 28th. So we'll see what happens. So. <clears throat> But definitely not the 23rd because, like I said, there won't be anything in the house. Nothing will be set up. And we'll be trying to get three cats into carriers and putting them in a car and driving down to uh, the hotel near SeaTac so that way we can take a 5 a.m. flight uh, to San Diego. So it is what it is. Microsoft has good CDNs. Yeah, that, that's for damn sure. Um, yeah. Pretty decent, really. I built yet another network at home so I could try out the Quest 2 since it doesn't require a book face. Oh, I account verification trash so I could use fake info in a network that has only route to Proton VPN. Oh, very cool. <clears throat> I'm surprised you haven't, you know, started to set up your tent in front of the Apple store waiting for the, you know, the, you know, the vision thing. You know, you could, you know, hook one of those up. I think I'm going to have to try one at the store to see if, you know, I, it actually makes sense to get. And unless it works with Windows, I probably won't buy it anyway. But it'll be cool to just check it out. There are several, there's a, not going to do it, too much money and no app support. Yeah, I mean, initially there won't be any app support, but it's going to be so damn cool and all the Apple boys will be on it. Apple people will be on it that, uh, yeah, it, it'll get something, uh, hopefully. You know, I only have 32 cores and like 100. There we go. <clears throat> this seems like something that could be installed when you, you know, run the install script or something. I don't know. There's an update 17.62. It's intriguing, but it's bleeding edge, not cutting edge. Yeah. I, you know, I think the, I think I said something similar as, uh, at work. I was like, I'm waiting for the Gen 3 version, which is only going to be about $2,500 and, you know, will be refined and be better. Um, kind of like, you know, I'm, I'm on a Pixel 6. I bought my daughter the 7. I probably will upgrade to the 8 or 9, um, you know, whenever it comes out <clears throat> because, you know, you know, it's a fairly robust product now, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but I just don't update every every time a new phone comes out. Girlfriend wants to try the Apple headset. Yeah, um, I'm sure they have them at the stores. You could go and give that a shot. Um, I'm sure they've got, you know, heavy dudes over there with, you know, pack and heat trying to make sure that somebody doesn't run out the store with that thing on their head. Now you can, now on stream, you need to upgrade that Pixel 6 to Graphene OS. It takes only 10 minutes. Yeah, but I'll lose all my stuff on there. Graphene OS, huh? Does it is it good? Graphene OS. <clears throat> oh, it's a pure mobile OS. Uh, it's, I'm good. I actually like to use my phone. So. I mean, I still send SMSs, so. No, yeah, see, I, I got to have those. So I got to have Google Apps. So yeah, that's a that's a non-starter for me. Um yeah. I used to do that shit all the time. I used to, you know, one reason I bought my phones was to root them uh and then I went to, you know, Pixel and never came back. I never never went back. They had the original Pixel um what was it the what was the what was the Pixel before the Pixel? Pixel phone or the pixel. <clears throat> yeah. Google Pixel, but Nexus one. I had a Nexus. I had a, uh, the Nexus uh, uh, phones. Um, and I actually had the first 4G smartphone uh, that Google put out from Motorola. I think the battery lasted like an hour and a half. 
on 4G. So, <clears throat> yeah, it was rough. Um, yeah. Yeah, the Nexus lineup. Actually, the Nexus was really good. Um, it, it was quite nice. Uh, I used to hang out on the XDA forums a lot to get jailbreaks or what have you. Two Pixel 5s and a 7 Pro. Yeah, my, uh, my daughter's got 7 Pro. I had I had the 5, and then I cashed it in for the, the 6. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I need... I need I need Google Apps, so because otherwise, I mean, where am I going to get packages from? You know, where am I going to get my Flappy Birds and stuff? You know, all that. So, um, oh, no, it would have helped if I had not had all of my shit on here. Us, where's the browser? There we go. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, I need my I need I need Google Apps. Um, you know, I, I use Maps and the Play Store. Oh, I see. Okay. Google Store is installed. It forces all Google Apps into a sandbox where they can't see other stuff on the phone. Oh, interesting. Didn't know that. Okay. Very nice. Why don't they say that then? Oh wait, I'm sorry. It is possible to install Play Services as a set of fully sandboxed apps without special privileges via our sandboxed Google Play compatibility layer. Yeah, I love jailbreaking my phone because it would do things like allow you to set like custom kernels. Uh, you know, you could you know turn the kernel down to where it was like you know 200, 200 megahertz or something like that instead of what it is now. Um, I don't know if they have that option anymore on there. See where we're at on the installation. Just install. There it is. All right, Visual Studio. We're still at three hundred ninety-seven, four hundred one. Jesus. Seriously, I have like thirty-two cores in this thing. So I'm not exactly sure why it's taking so damn long. Turn off CMD. <clears throat> See, this is where I should have. Baked the cake before I got to it. So. I don't know what wall is. Let's go ahead and remove that. There we go. <clears throat> so getting started. Um, okay, so once you've installed everything, um, I'm wow. Okay, a small Rust application. Let's write a small application with our new dependency in main.rs using the following code. So use Ferris says. Uh, no, that's that's. This dependency, there we go. And add dependency. So Ferris says 0.2. So we have to manually put in the version numbers of the applications we want to use. Okay. Crates.io. Okay, so they have a crate. So Crate is the version, they're, they're packages, if you will. Um, Fenris? What was the name of the thing? Ferris, not Fenris, Ferris. Okay, so Ferris is a hierarchical timer wheel. Okay, sounds, sounds terribly fun. And that's where, it, that's where it fails in the small rest app, yeah. Um, so we have to manually add that. Or we can also do this by running cargo add, Ferris says, point two. Okay, let's, let's do that, because I don't think we have to compile anything. So technically, we should still be able to go. Okay, so that worked. Um, it added something in the, okay, so you. One second, I know. There we go. So you see the dependencies in the cargo.toml file where it's got hello rust and dependencies. So it added Fenris dot says dot point two. <clears throat> now we can run cargo build and it will install our dependency for us. I don't know if it'll actually work because uh, don't show don't show files toml files again. That's too bad. Um, <clears throat> it says cargo build, okay. Cargo build. 
it's compiling something. Wow, okay, that worked. Is the installation done? I don't understand how that's working. Let me go up. Oh, it's done. Okay, that was quick. Um, all right, let me go back to the done installing. Wow, okay, that went quick. Update all. Let's make sure we've got all of our updates. Apologies, y'all. I'm going to come by it honestly. <clears throat> Start download operation. This is where we are downloading and installing the operation of the downloadings. There we go. Another 289 meg. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so we're going. We're downloading another 64 packages. It is just like Kali Linux. Okay. I'm assuming I'm going to have to have this VS uh, Visual Studio installer on the reg. So I'll have to figure out how to make it automatically run updates. <clears throat> the good thing is it looks like I didn't have to reinstall the, the system here. So uh, let's close that. And we're at 80%. I appreciate y'all being here. Their CDN only runs about 700 megabits per second for me. They need a parallel downloader so I can get to five gigabits. Yep. Um, <clears throat> I uh, have Spectrum Internet down at my new house, and so far it's running at about 1.2 gig, according to my Orbi uh, net, uh, my mesh uh, network down there. So um, considering we're going to be using it for YouTube TV, I'm hoping it's stable as shit, because if my wife has problems with TV, I'm gonna have to buy a fucking set top box. Um, and I'd really like to get off of like traditional cable. Mine's a bit, yeah, yeah, everybody wants, yeah. I, I'm two blocks away from five gigabit um, fiber. AT&T doesn't come to my house. Two blocks away. All right, so it is done. We are all done. No more updates. The updates are all good. Visual Studio Community Preview. I don't need that. Okay, so we're good. Visual Studio Community. This must be like, oh, 17.7. We're on 17.62. Okay. All right, I'm going to close that. <clears throat> okay, so in hindsight, that wasn't completely painful. Um, I just failed to read because I'm, you know, a bit salty. Um, <clears throat> I won't lie. All right, so. Um, I'm going to move my screens around here because I am, that shit's just huge. All right, so let me, let me shrink that up a bit. One of these days I will um, convert everything over to Linux, but it will not be this day. <clears throat> they were three blocks from my house four years with gigabit before I opened a complaint with the FF, FCC and SEC. Suddenly they offered me five gig uncapped. Nice. Huh. So I can make, you complained to the FCC and SEC. Interesting. Because <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, when I was down there in San Diego, I actually walked past like the, I don't, I don't know if fiber has D slams or whatever, but it's the big green, you know, networking bit that you see alongside the roads where it's like, ah, okay, I know where my fiber's coming from or I know where my, my connectors come from. I figured I could just go get a ditch witch or something, you know, dig down a couple feet and just run fiber myself, you know, a couple blocks to my house through the backyard and, you know, over a, over a fence and whatever, you know. Um, apparently that's illegal. Who knew? So, yeah. Um, all right, so let me let me clean up my desktop a little bit here. Uh, so we've added dependencies in this project. We called one called Ferris says our cargo.toml file. Uh, we'll add this information. Uh, you can either manually add it in the document or diagram. Uh, they only just barely expand to cover the legal requirements for expansion. My contention is that they didn't expand as they claimed in this area. Oh. <clears throat> well. My thing was, I went on to all of the ISP, like, you know, find out what ISPs you have in your area. And I put my zip code in, 92126, and it said, yes, you have fiber in your area. And then I went to put in my address on AT&T's website, and they're like, no, you don't have fiber, but we'll offer you 50 megabits of internet connectivity. And I was like, 
Oink. And that's what I said. Um, the, the middle finger wasn't for any of you folks, by the way. So that was for AT&T who got the finger. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm shit out of luck. Uh, thankfully, Spectrum doesn't have data caps either. Uh, and the minute that I get told that, you know, fiber's in my neighborhood, I am gone. Because um, I bought... bought uh, Orbi <clears throat> from Netgear. I bought a Netgear Orbi. Yeah, I bought one of these. Uh, I bought the quad band one um, because it has a 10 gigabit Ethernet port on the back of it that I'm like, oh, I'll use this. Um, the one I have right now is TP-Link, and that was before I realized they were owned up by the Chinese. So I figured, uh, you know, this one does up to three gigs, but it has actually up to 10, 10 gigabits of speed. Um, so uh, I bought one. I don't think I'll need another one because I need a, it does 6,000 square foot of range. So um, it's not bad. <clears throat> Orbi Quad, where is it? Uh, yeah, that's it. This, this is the one. Right here, yeah. 200 devices, 6,000 feet of range, 10 gigabit. Ethernet port or internet port it comes with yeah so you get your your fat ten gig there you have a two and a half gig and three Ethernets uh, you know so enough you know and if I buy another one I can add to I think you can add up to like ten of them together in, in some kind of massive kind of thing if you wanted to go crazy with it um, <clears throat> so yeah it's not bad. It's not a thousand dollars. That was because I've, there's two of them, but um, yeah, I think I paid five hundred for the one. I keep Comcast as a backup, but my fiber's been a hundred percent stable last year. Yeah, I don't, I don't have two ISPs. Um, I mean, technically, I could, I guess, but uh, I would probably, you know, have a, you know, get the fiber, but keep like a really cheap Spectrum one just in case it goes to to shit. Um, uh, so yeah, that that would be an option, but. <clears throat> anyway, so, all right, so if this is correct, we can now, okay, so where, where's the hello world at? Let me see. Uh, Tommel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we want a cargo new, hello Rust. All right, so cargo new, hello Rust. Hey! Anyway. Um... <clears throat> So cool. There you go. Um, oh wait, no, I already did that. I did. I already did that shit. Yeah, I, I already ran that. What, what was the one I was having? Oh, cargo run. That's what it was. It was the error message was right. The error message was. What was it? Yeah, cargo run. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> there we go. See. All right. Yeah. Now I can. Now I can dance properly. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there you go. We've got my hello world. Uh, and then it said cargo run. You should see this in your terminal. Um, it actually didn't say any of that. Hello rust dot one dot Didn't add any of those things. Finished dev optimized target in 0 0.81 seconds running target debug. Hello rust dot exe. So it actually created an exe file. Interesting. Uh, CD hello, oh, CD hello Rust. Okay, so there's nothing in that. So RM, RM dash RF hello Rust. <clears throat> uh, what? Anyway, eh, it doesn't matter. Uh, adding dependencies. All right, so we did that, and now we can run cargo build. And it will install our dependency for us. We already did that. Uh, you'll see you're running this command, create a cargo.lock. Cargo.lock, yes. This file is a log of the exact versions of the dependencies we're running locally. Use this dependency we open main.rs, remove everything that's in there. It's just another example and add this line to it. So we say, okay, so we go to main.rs. Okay, so. This line means that we can now say the function Fenris dash says create exports for us. 
Is that supposed to say create or just create? I don't know what that means. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're going to create a small system. You have a third ISP just for IoT. Wow. Okay, so the, the one that I bought from or uh, Netgear Orbi has a separate, has, uh, has three uh, network connections. So it has the guest network, which I stuck my work laptop on at home at, when I was down there because one, I just don't trust my work laptop. Uh, the second one is for IoT and it actually has a specific IoT. And I think all that means is it supports things like WPA2. Uh, and then the main one, which has just WPA3 on it straight. So, um, because most everything in our house is, no, I, I understand that, uh, Lady P. When I was working at CrowdStrike, I had an enti entirely different, you know, network uh, router setup. Um, I actually, yeah, I used a piece of shit like uh, MediaLink wireless router for my, my work laptop. So, um, and, you know, it, it may be that I go back to that, but I, I you know, yeah. I mean, um, even here, I still run my work laptop on the guest network, so it's not connected to anything inside the house. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. All right, we're going to run a Rust application. So we're going to use Ferris says say. All right, so we're going to delete everything that was in the system here. Uh, use Ferris says, think, think, say, and then from the previous step. You're gonna hear me, um, I'm gonna compare a lot of things to Golang, so suck it up. Uh, just you know, know that it's not the same as Golang, it's just yet, you know, one thing I've always heard is once you learn one programming language, they kind of all build on the others, so you can always, you know, make explanations. After beef sides, I finally set up two guest networks for IoT, one for two and a half, or 2.4 and one for five. Five runs in isolation mode. Yeah, I think that's what the, the Netgear Orbi does. It runs the IoT stuff in isolation mode, which is kind of funny because I have so many IoT devices now in my, my new place. I have my garage door opener. I have several, well, I mean, I have some here too, but it's like I have several, you know, ring cameras, the TV's IoT basically now, the stove and the vent above it are IoT. They're smart things, which I haven't set those up yet. Um, my car will be down there at some point, so it's IoT. So yeah, it's, um, it, it's interesting. <clears throat> it's very interesting. Um, all right, so we have uh, Fenris says, all right, so we're going to use uh, use an STD IO dang dang uh, standard out. I see a lot of standard out stuff on these uh, buff writer. So Oh, curly bracket. And then, no, curly bracket. There we go. Okay. I hope it explains this later on. So we're going to type all this stuff out. Funk main. Dink, dink. And then that. And then let std out equal std out. All right. And then let message equal string from hello okay apparently we're now something called rest stations what 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 happened here what what the hell's going on? why did it no 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 i let message equals what's this oh i'm gonna i'm gonna hate that i'm gonna have to figure that out <clears throat> Hello, Rustations. Says we're all cutesy with our little icons and stuff. I turned off isolation mode on 2.4 so I could step set up or control the devices from my phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lady P. Uh, yeah. Uh, of course, it's standard in and out, obviously. <clears throat> Let width equal message chars 
don't let mutt writer. If I need to connect an app to an app on my phone, I connect the phone temporarily to my IoT network. If I have a dedicated phone for IoT systems. That's a good idea too. That's a good idea too. Um yeah, I I haven't decided whether or not I wanna, you know, go that that complete route uh or how far I wanna go with that. I mean there's we got a lot of time. So um if I have Okay. It's adding shit and I'm not happy with that. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to, you know destroy this thing and, you know, stop it from adding random shit to my system here. Uh, I don't know what inner is for, and this is confusing me. So let's see. Can I uninstall the? No, I can uninstall that. Rust analyzer. Uh, gonna, is this the thing that's causing the? Yeah, code completion with imports insertions, right? Yeah, so that's the thing that's causing me issues. <clears throat> um, all right, so. Even my network is an ongoing process architect. Well, for expansion, then you can decide how complex you should get. Yeah, my my issue is I just I get too many devices on this net on this TP link one, and then everything just kind of can't connect anymore. And I I don't know why that is. So, um, you know, saw the the instruct. It says up to two hundred devices on that uh, that Orbi one, uh, and it allows for additional expansion. So. All right, so I don't know why we have an inner here. I don't know what that is, and I can't. Nope. It's adding random shit, which is just setting me up, setting me up to fail here. So, okay, semicolon. Say <clears throat> message dot as bytes. All right, with ampersand mutt writer dot unwrap. All right, and supposedly that's it. Uh, I do change Wi-Fi networks. I'm going to wait until I get a new device before I dedicate a device to IoT management. Yeah, probably a good idea. Um, all right, so... Uh, I think we got everything correct. I don't know what all these little bits are. Um, it's, maybe it's just trying to tell me what different things are. Or maybe I'm supposed to put those things in. Uh, once we save that, so we're going to go ahead and save this. And we'll see if it works. Save. Plug, switch, light. Pretty much everything in the house. Well, yeah, I mean, computers, everything's IoT, right? Anything that can get an IP and connect to the Internet. Um, all right, so this is correct. I don't, like I said, I don't know what the gray boxes are, but we're just going to give it a shot. Cargo. Run. Okay, so obviously we had a compilation error. Obviously. Okay, so cargo run. Compiling. Hello, Rust 1.0. Expected. Okay, let me close this and <clears throat> move that over. It says expected. Well, what line? Hello, Rust. Expected found keyword let. Let wit equal message dot chars count semicolon oh missed a semicolon that's probably it right there <clears throat> I'm not immune to this um all right so nope still got some errors okay oh no we got okay so we have some warnings but okay everything worked all right so we have we have some hard linking files in the incremental compilation cache failed. Copying files instead. Consider moving the cache directory to a file system which supports hard linking in the session directory. Ah, okay. So because I put this into my Google Drive, it doesn't like hard links uh, in Google Drive, obviously. 
So the errors that I'm getting are because I've got my Rust directory. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lady P, it worked. And only had four warnings, so or three warnings. So, you know, ship it. Um, yeah, so I got, you know, some little ASCII text with some kind of crab-like thing. So with our, our STDs are actually crabs. They're Lady, Lady P for your, your benefit. Um, you know, we got some crabs. Who is this crab Ferris? Ferris is the mascot of Rust. Many Rust programmers call them Rust. Yeah, no, we're good. Um, uh, Ferris is a name playing off of the adjective Ferris, meaning pertaining to iron, since Rust often forms on iron. It seems like a fun origin for our iron. Yeah, I think you thought way too much about the freaking icon and whatever, so. On my place, I have one Google Home. Yeah, I have a Google Home Mini, and I have I have one light bulb. that is an IoT light bulb that I'm going to take with me. Um, and I don't know if the fans I bought have an IoT component on them as well. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, all right, so we got things to work. Uh, now you're ready onto our learn page, so we can go see the book. Uh, I think I have the book downloaded already. Cargo book. No, I want the Rust book, right? Read the book. Okay. Rust programming language. All right. So the Rust programming language book. Drink. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Rust language book. Uh, written assumes you're using 167.1, uh, released in February uh, 9th of 2023. Uh, see the installation chapter to install or update Rust. Got rid of all the Amazon stuff. It's all listening with open source whisper, and that feeds an LLM. My house is infinitely smarter than Google Home or Amazon Echo. Oh. Very cool. Okay. We're working on some stuff for, uh, I actually get to go to Vegas this year. Uh, August 7th and 8th is when uh, the event that I'm going to be running is down in Vegas. Um, I've been stretched a little thin this week because I'm also doing the uh, monthly business review for our office, our department as well. So in addition to prepping for the bug bounty event that is happening down there, um, also having to do the MBR and a bunch of other stuff. So um, also editing or doing content editing for uh, a book, which I talked about on Tuesday as well. So uh, and finishing up week five of my course uh, and I'm streaming with you fine folks. So and so and moving so you know hopefully i've got i'll end the class on the 21st the mbr is next thursday so i'll have that off my plate um i have one other thing that i think i'm gonna have to push off i'm gonna have to reach out to my friend Catherine and say yeah that's not going to be done by the end of june uh, but she's already extended it one time so <clears throat> the home was a gift from a girlfriend who wanted the google cooking timer um, I have a sous vide that is actually Bluetooth or IoT powered as well that I, I use here. Um, I, yeah, the Google Home Mini for me was a gift. So um, it was when I worked at Leviathan, one of the people gave them as a gift. And I didn't use it for the longest time. And then I just plugged it in and bought an IoT light that I, you know, that's the only thing I used the Google Home Mini for. So um, it is what it is. All right. So we've done installation. We did the Hello World. Uh, wow, they actually suggest, okay, projects, writing a Rust program, okay. Let's see if the installation tells me anything I don't know already. Installing Rust, okay, Rust up on Windows. On Windows, go to Rust, uh, Rust C version, okay, Rust C version, <clears throat> okay. Uh, you should see a version of React. Echo Path, yes. Path ENV, yeah. Echo Path. Uh, Rust Up Update. So, Rust Up Update. Okay. So, checking, yes. Unchanged 170. Cleaning up downloads and temp directories. Go and install Rust and Rust Up. Self install. Okay. So, that's good. All right. Hello World. We did that. Uh, Let's see, running a new program. We did the Hello World. We did the Hello Cargo, I think, as well, which was the restation y thing. Let me double check. Okay. Wait for that. So, 
cargo version. Okay, 1.7.0. All right. How are you? An hour and 20 minutes. Uh, yeah, I love sous vide. I've got a sous vide. I'm actually using it right now. Um, it's an Anova, A N O V A. Um, yeah, I love it. Um, you know, up to my stake game like 100%. Uh, creating cargo project. All right, did that. Uh, open your cargo.toml in your editor of choice. It should look similar to the following. Hello, cargo. And more dependencies. Toml stands for Tom's Obvious Minimal Language Format. Developers are so cute. So main dot source, okay. Um, building and running a cargo project, cargo build, we did that. This command creates an executable target hello cargo or hello cargo exe in your Windows rather than your current directory um, <clears throat> because the default build is a default debug build. Cargo puts the binary in a directory named debug. You can run the executable with this command. Okay. If all goes well, hello world should print in the terminal, which it did, and we actually did the Restations bit. Uh, cargo Run, Hello World. When using Cargo Run is more convenient than having to remember to run Cargo Build, then use the whole path on the binary, so most developers just use Cargo Run. Uh, notice this time didn't see output indicating Cargo was compiling Hello Cargo. Cargo figured out that the files hadn't changed, so it didn't rebuild. We just ran the binary. If you had modified your source, Cargo would have rebuilt the project before running it, and you would have seen this output. Okay. Okay. Cargo also provides a command called cargo check. So it checks your code to make sure it compiles but doesn't produce an executable. Interesting. Cargo check. I would say you'd want to probably have some kind of alias set up pretty quickly if you're using Linux where cargo check or cargo version or cargo build, where it'd be just like, Build, check, that kind of thing. So, um, expected argument against. Oh wait, oh no, it's no, 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 no tack tacks. Okay, so that's just great. So inconsistent, inconsistent bits. Okay, hard linking, failed garbage collect. Okay, great. So we're gonna file OS error two. Uh, hello Rust generated three warnings, but it will build. Okay, why would you not want an executable? Often cargo check is much faster than cargo build because it skips the step to producing an executable. Continually checking your work while writing code, cargo check will speed up the process of letting you know your project is still compiling. Uh, many developers run cargo check periodically as they write their program to make sure it compiles and they run cargo build when they're ready to use the executable. Okay, so what have we learned so far about cargo? We can create a new car project called cargo new. Uh, we can create a project using cargo build. We can build and run using cargo run. We can build without producing a binary with cargo check. And instead of saving the result of the build in the same directory, cargo stores it in the target debug directory. I don't know what that is. Target debug. I don't know what the target debug directory would be. Oh, here's the target debug directory. Okay. It actually is literally called target debug. So there you go. Here's the rest.exe file. Oh, right. Can't open it. <clears throat> okay. No, I don't need help with .d files. Interesting. So it's just like a an YAA. I don't know. Young adult athletes. I don't know what that is. YAA. Uh -uh. Yes, yet another acronym. Yes, yes, um, yes, one hundred percent. There, Lady P. Um, <clears throat> so, build for release. When your project is ready for release, you use cargo build dash dash release to compile it with optimizations. This command will create an executable in target release instead of target debug. Interesting. Okay, okay. The optimizations make your Rust code run faster, but turning them on lengthens the time it takes for your program to compile. This is why there are two different profiles, one for dev when you want to build quickly and often, another one for building a final program when you want 
you'll give to a user that won't be re rebuilt repeatedly and will run as fast as possible. For benchmarking your code's running time, make sure to build cargo release and benchmark with the executable in target release. Okay. Interesting. So you do <clears throat> build dash dash release. It should create a directory uh, under target. Okay, so it'll create a target release under this directory once I, and there's the release. Okay, so there's the release folder. All right, very cool. Uh, it took 3.76 seconds to build an optimized release, but there were no error messages. So that's kind of cool. I'm wondering, the one thing I would say is how do you set your compile flags? Right, I would want to. I would want to know what compile flags were being used in my build pipeline so that I can look at that. <clears throat> cargo is convention with simple projects. Cargo doesn't provide a lot of value over just using Rust C, but it will prove its worth as your programs become more intricate. Once programs grow multiple files or need a dependency, it's much easier to let Cargo coordinate the build. Even though the Hello Cargo project is simple and now uses much of the real tooling you'll use in the rest of your Rust career however short that career it is. In fact, to work on any existing projects, you use the following commands to check out the code using git, change the project's directory, and then build, right? So git clone example uh, org slash some project, cd to some project, and then cargo build. <clears throat> All right, I'm off to a great start on my rush journey. Yay, yay. Um, all right, so we've learned how to update, install, locally install a documentation, write a hello world, and run a new project. Uh, all right, so in pro chapter two, we'll build a guessing game program. Hey, sweet, we got like real shit. Okay. <clears throat> all right. Um, okay, so maybe I got another 15, 20 minutes here, and then I have to go like cook steak. So. <clears throat> Uncle Rico, running all our lives and eating all our steak. Anyway. <clears throat> let, me, let me move this over a little bit. I don't think you need to see the, the bits on the side here so I can get more. Um. <clears throat> all right, so programming a guessing game. Let's jump into Rust by working through a hands-on project together. This program, this chapter introduces you to a few common Rust concepts by showing you how to use them in a real program. Well, that's interesting. <clears throat> uh, you'll learn about let, match, methods, associated functions, external crates, which are external dependencies. So crates and dependencies are the same thing, folks. You just mix some white vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, salt, and water together in a spray bottle and squirt it on yourself for 10 minutes. You could accelerate the... <laughs> I don't know where to go with that, Lady P. Um, so wait, white vinegar, hyd I'm. Why do I think that that would be some kind of acid? Vinegar and hydrogen peroxide, salt and water. I'm thinking that that gets a bit. Does that get a bit explodey or acidy? You're gonna make me look that up. You're gonna make me look that up. Oh, it's how you. Oh, can you just leave it outside for a long time? It would be safer for me. I think. <clears throat> how you rust rust metal? Okay. Rusting rusting metals. Oh, ten minutes. No shit. Okay. Well, yeah, the hydrogen peroxide, I, I would imagine, and vinegar, vinegar is, what's it? Vinegar is, an ac yeah, acetic acid, right? So it, you know, there it is. Oh, yeah, look, at it. We, got, we got a lot going on here. So <clears throat> a lot of oxygen molecules, yeah, a lot of oxygen molecules take place in the following reaction. So, yeah. And you're adding salt, so you know you've got additional, you know, NaCl and more water with the uh, the O2. You probably just get rid of the water and just add more vinegar. I would, I, I would, I would imagine. So. Um, <clears throat> cool. 
yeah, with the salt and with the acid and the vinegar, uh, I would have and the hydrogen peroxide, I would have just assumed it would blow me up. So, um, it sounded like uh, what you might have saw on uh, the Martian when they when they built that. Oh wait, spoiler alert. <clears throat> Okay, so, so far so good. Um, I haven't uh, broke anything. So, all right, so we need to set up a new project. So that's easy enough. We're gonna close some boundaries. All right, so I'm in Rust and I need to go CD dot dot. Now we're in Rust, so it'll be cargo new guessing game. All right, so we're gonna create a directory called guessing game which it did, all right. And then we're gonna go CD guessing game. <clears throat> Didn't want you to end up with pits. Pitted, so pitted. Um, oh, what did I do? Back it up, okay, there, there we go, all right. So, uh, first command, cargo new, takes the name of the project, right, as the second argument changes to the dr project's directory, right. Tina, come get some ham. Oh, there you go, patina, yeah. There. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna go and look at the Tomo file. All right, so it says guessing game, uh, dependencies. Uh, as you saw in chapter one, Cargo New creates a Hello World program for you. Check out the main source file, and main.rs, funk main, print len, print line or print len, Hello World. We're going to compile the Hello World program and run it in the same step using Cargo Run. So, Cargo Run. So, we are doing all of the things that necessary. It says Hello World. All right, so that worked. <clears throat> My wife's watching Top Gun Maverick. <sighs> Processing a guess. <clears throat> hmm. How deep do I want to get in on this? Well, it's not a lot. Um, to be fair, but we'll see. Is it okay? So when I tell people my programming skills are a bit rusty, I don't normally use it as a <laughs> I know I'm a bit rusty. Uh I know a bit of rust. Uh all right. <clears throat> so let me see. Main.rs. Oh, so I can close that one. Uh one second. Cargo lop uh, source main.rs. There we go. All right, close that off. All right, and we're gonna all right, we're gonna use stdio funk main. It's good to be back in a funk main right now. All right, and then print lin print lin is it bang? Bang, hold on. My old ass eyeballs. Make sure I haven't screwed something up here. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. So Printland Bang. That was Tom's first billion dollar movie. Oh, Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. Uh, oh wait. Guess the number. Okay, and close that. Uh, print len bang. Please input your guess. <clears throat> Scoot it over here. I'm going to see what I'm doing. All right. Let mutt. I'm, sur I'm assuming mutt is like a mutex or something, maybe? Yes equals string new IO standard in. So it's taking input from somebody. Uh, read line. So it's going to read whatever you put in that line uh, or whatever you put in from the output. Yes. It's going to take that and make it guess so guess is whatever your input string is going to or the input's going to be expect so when i'm done with this i'm you know once we compile this then i'm going to have to go because i can hear my wife uh, prepping for dinner so um 
failed to read lines. So you're putting in error corrections or error, error conditions in. Uh, and then print len you guessed. And then about five minutes. All right, and then uh, we're almost done. So that's it. Uh, so uh, use STDIO by default. Rust has a set of items defined in the standard library that brings you the scope of every program. This is called the prelude. So everything before funk main is the prelude in this case. Uh, you can see everything in the standard library documentation. If a type you want isn't in the prelude, you'll have to bring that type into scope specifically with a use statement. Using STDIO library provides you with a number of useful features, including the ability to accept user input. So you can choose to use all of STD or just the IO function portion of it, right? So that makes sense. As you saw in chapter one, the main func is the entry point into the program. Uh, FN syntax declares a new function. The parentheses indicate there are no parameters and the curly brackets is the body of the function. Uh, you also learned in chapter one, uh, printlin bang is the macro that prints a string to the, uh, to the screen. So it's going to say, guess the number, please input your guess. Uh, this code is printing a prompt stating what the game is and requesting input from the user. So next we'll create a variable. So we're going to create the variable guess. So I'm guessing mute, mute mutt is the, you know, saying, you know, uh, set, you know, guess to equal a string. Uh, now the program is getting interesting. There's a lot going on in this line. We use the let statement to create the variable. Let apples equal five, right? This line creates a new variable named apples and binds it to the value five in Rust. Uh, variables are immutable, so mutt is... This is a mutable, this is mutable, not immutable. Um, so guess can become whatever you want, right? So mutt means I can change it, it's mutable. Uh, if you say let apples equal five, apples is five forever until you create a new one. Um, obviously that's what it says right here. Uh, um, <clears throat> so the slash slash syntax is a comment. It continues until the end of the line. Rust ignores everything in comments or everything after the slash slash. Uh, returning to the guessing game, you know that let mutable guess will introduce a mutable variable called guess equal sign tells if we want to assign it to something, which is the uh, string that you're about to input. Uh, in full, line has created a new mutable variable that's bound to a new empty instance of string. Makes sense. So we're going to receive user input. Uh, so we're going to, you know, mutable guess. So it's going to be the mutable value of guess read the line. So if I say, you know, please guess the number and I put 12, the mutable guess values is going to read the line that you're putting in and put it into the guess variable. Uh, we hadn't, if we hadn't imported IO library to use standard IO at the beginning of the program, we could still use the function by calling this as stand uh, STD uh, colon colon IO colon colon standard in. So you can actually add things after the fact if you've forgotten them. Ideally, you wouldn't want to do that too many times, and you'd want to change it so that you're calling it at the top of the variable if you're calling, you know, stdio too many times. Um, at least that's my thinking logically here. Uh, handling potential failure. So the fail to read line bit is in there uh, in case something happens where you, you run into some issues. Uh, we should have written this code as, you know, IO standard in read line mutex expect. However, one long line is difficult to read. So uh, they split it up into two lines, which is why you don't see a colon at the end of that uh, bit there. I think that's that's how it works, right? I didn't, I didn't make a mistake on that. Yeah, so there's no colon, so the line continues moving along. Um, So it's best to divide it. It's often wise to introduce a new line or other white space to help break up long lines when you call a method with the dot method name syntax. So we can discuss what the line does. Okay, so chapter six will cover enumerations and more error, or enums, enumerations, enum in more error in more detail. Purpose of these result types is to encode error handling information. All right. 
Um, so there's an expect. If you don't call expect, the program will compile, but you get a warning. Uh, okay, so you get maybe an error variant, but you handled. Rust warns you that you haven't used the result value returned from read line, indicating that the program hasn't handled a possible error. Okay. So, oh, it, man. Okay, so I'm going to have to stop here. Um, I didn't realize that I've still got a ton of shite to do, which is going to put me past my five minutes, and my wife's going to be very unhappy. So we'll stop here. Um, I'm going to hold on to this. Um, we'll come back next Friday. Uh, or Tuesday, you know, if I just decide I want to get a wild hair up my ass and learn some, uh, learn some, uh, you know, rust. So let me go ahead and save that. Uh, we're on the guessing game tutorial, so I will make sure we put that in here. Um, anyway, I'm going to go build some, uh, I'm going to go, you know, burn some meat like cavemen did. And, um, okay, so it wasn't completely awful setting this up. I just, you know, thought it would be easy. Yeah, thank you, Lady P. Uh, have the weekend you deserve. Be kind to one another. Stay safe. Uh, be kind, you know, watch the fireworks uh, as the indictments come down. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, have a good weekend, y'all. See you later. Bye.